was uh, looking at the recognition of uh, VPPs in different sectors, the public sector, the private sector, private practitioners, uh, civil society and NGOs. So we started off by unpacking what recognition means. Um, and essentially, it came down to uh, legal recognition. But then we also discussed, in the context of our discussions, we're looking at recognition also in terms of accept acceptability. Um, but this was, again, linked to legal recognition. And unpacking also what that legal recognition means, um, it, it, it involved issues around um, the description of work, uh, the clarity of, uh, of levels of training, knowledge and experience, the adequate uh, tertiary qualifications, clarity on who uh, can do what, what they can and cannot do, who they can work with, um, and management and decision making issues. So it was not, we, we, the group felt that it was not just a statement that this group is recognized in the law, that actually then means, has, has to mean something else. So we discussed um, uh, the various um, inputs around what constitutes um, recognition. We then looked at um, recognition of VPPs in the public sector. Uh, and it, it, um, what came out of that was that even within the private sec public sector where uh, VPPs um, would be employed by the government, that's why they're in the public sector, they are still issues related to recognition. Not necessarily the legal recognition because they are part of, of the government, um, but, uh, but other, other, other areas related to that uh, legal recognition. So for example, um, issues around um, uh, career progression, issues around lack of clarity on uh, schemes of service, issues around uh, supervision and oversight um, uh, and re remuneration as well. And basically, um, progression was not just seen as career progression, but also academic uh, progression. And I think that was mentioned in, in the first group that presented, group number two, I think. Um, uh, yes, and, and uh, yeah, so that was, that was that was the discussion on the public sector. And the overwhelming sort of conclusion was, was that the law needs to make space for, for all actors. So whether or not, um, uh, you know, because uh, in, in, in some countries, they seem to just clamp all the public sector workers in, into one category, but we needed to actually then uh, unpack that uh, and have the law um, be very specific, or the practice also be very specific on who can do what and how they are recognized. We looked at the public, private sector um, uh, together with the private practitioners, and that was uh, extremely interesting. There were various views from different countries. Uh, we had views from South Africa, Nigeria, Botswana, Kenya, Sudan, Ethiopia, where it was very clear that countries have Variant, various, various levels or variant, various degrees of recognition and ac the actual practice of how VPPs can work in the private sector or even um, operate as private practitioners, so like opening their own clinics and, and so on and so forth. Um, and I think the overwhelming conclusion from, from that discussion was that um, VPPs have got skills uh, and these are, uh, need to be defined, and the scope of what they can do also needs to be defined, and this has, has to be specific um, to each country. Then with NGOs and civil society, we also looked at that, um, and uh, there was a few examples given for, in, in, for different countries and, and what the experimentation they, they have with uh, or what the, the, the legal recognition in those countries say, but it was felt also that in terms of uh, the actual practice, there, there needs to be strengthening of, of, of the practice and, and looking at uh, uh, particularly the area of uh, supervision of, 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 um, of supervision of VPPs who are working in NGOs. So if an NGO perhaps has, is employing VPPs, then what, what, what link does that have with, with the actual um, veterinary services? Um, so we then attempted <laughs> to look at uh, the recommendations and, and what the take-homes would be and what, what needs to happen after this. Um, 
And I think what, what, what was really clear was that um, there needs to be goodwill. The word goodwill was, was really used. Um, this is an area that we have seen in the last two, 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 two days that you know, there are various uh, views on this. So goodwill needs to be built by all, uh, in all actors, and this can, can be done through um, using means of including all cadres of veterinary paraprofessionals, including, we did discuss also the issue of community animal health workers briefly, and we said that um, uh, we cannot look at one area and, and ignore the other area, so that also needs to be, to be done. Then there were specific recommendations which, um, were well, mainly directed at the national authorities, the, the uh, veterinary statutory bodies, uh, the VPPs themselves, um, and the private sector. So the, 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 the main issue, again, was lack of clarity in defining the scope, what VPPs can do, where they can work, what the supervision models are going to look like, and I think I, I suppose also because of time, there was also a recognition that this is a start of a conversation and really something has to happen. Uh, and, and I think um, there was a lot of energy from that group. And I think hopefully, you know, we are going to, as we move forward, have uh, even more concrete actions.